All right, so before we get started, I'm going to walk you through some of the materials that I'm going to be using today. Uh, the first thing I got was free. It's a giant coffee bag from one of the local organic coffee shops here in Oklahoma City. Um, I'm going to go ahead and not say their name because I'm probably going to go beg for more burlap sacks later. And I want all those to myself, so I don't want you all to take my bags. Uh, but here's one of their bags. I've already measured it. It's about three feet tall. Uh, and the inside has a diameter of about two feet. The next thing is some of this galvanized steel. You can pick it up at any of the box stores. Um, and basically, it's just used for, uh, you know, keeping animals and pins and such like that next thing we need is our black and decker or rather our uh, drill doesn't have to be black and decker get a pair of tin snips there next to the brahms that's optional a tape measure some three quarter inch wood screws one small three foot pallet this was also provided to me by home depot for free um, I used the smaller one because I figured it would work best with the uh, size of the coffee bag we have. And then last, the last thing you're going to need are four uh, industrial rollers. And putting those on is going to be step one. So step one, make sure all of your industrial rollers are facing the same direction. And you can tell because of that little word there where it says China. So just make sure China is facing the same direction on all four of your wheels and then screw them into place. Also for your supplies you're going to need one four foot piece of PVC pipe and a PVC cap. Hello YouTube. I am disappointed. Okay, so earlier I said that all you would need for this project are three quarter inch screws, the casters, etc, etc. Here's the problem with the three quarter inch screw. They don't work. You can literally, they're not going to hold your casters into place. So make sure that the three, I would suggest going with a one inch screw or one and a half inch screw and get one with a bigger head. You live and you learn. All right, so I've used my overly gigantic three inch screws because these were all I had. And now I'm putting in the last screw on the last caster here on the ground because the table was too shaky. Who cares? It clears. Okay, so I'm here with the what's going to be the exterior of the of the unit of the thing. It's the exoskeleton, the frame, um, to kind of give support to the bag. And what I have to do, we measured out the distance that it takes for the bag. This is about the the diameter that the bag is going to be when it's full and now there's about a hundred of these little metal pieces I don't know if you can catch that in there but I'm bending each one of them back so that it doesn't puncture the bag and it will make sure that there's just adequate support so it's really slow going on this part of the process I would suggest if you're gonna do this finding an alternative method because um, this part takes probably the longest of anything so far. Okay, so now I'm just wiring. I've got some spare wire that came uh, that this galvanized metal was actually wrapped in and so I'm going to use that to essentially tie the uh, frame to our rolling cart and as you can see it works really well so we're just gonna wrap it around through here a few times in a couple of different ways and the reason
reason why I'm doing this is just so that if there's a really windy day, I don't have to worry about the, this part tipping over, sending strawberry plants everywhere or whatever I have growing on at the moment. But so use the spare wire, don't throw it away. I mean, I was going to recycle it anyways until I thought about this. Uh, but use it to secure your frame to the pallet. If you decide that this project is too much for you and you just want to use the itchy, itchy burlap bag for a dog bed, apparently they love it. Just throwing that in. You know, project, failure, dog bed, success. Okay, so now we've placed the burlap bag inside to the inside of the frame. And the project. I'm going to start drilling the holes, the irrigation holes, into the PVC pipe. The way this is gonna work because I've measured my bag, I know that it's about two and a half feet tall. So this length of the PVC is two feet. So I don't want to water the top of the soil because that's going to be watered by a rain, by rain and you know normal methods. I really just want to make sure that the bottom three quarters of the soil is getting moist. So I'm only going to drill holes from here down. Okay, so we're just about finishing up with the last few holes here and you can tell that I'm spacing each hole about, well I'm trying for about an inch apart but it's not really that big of a deal if some are closer or some are further away. Okay, so that's it. We've drilled holes, you can, well maybe you can see them, but they're all the way right there through the red. And then a third set of holes all the way down here so that the water is being evenly distributed across the soil. Okay, so I put the pipe in and filled the bag up with dirt. And as you can see, we're just ridiculously high um, on this container here so I'll need to get a hacksaw or something later on um, after the fact and make sure I cut the top of that off so it doesn't look so ridiculous um, but the holes are in place the pipe is in place and now we're going to begin the process of cutting out holes to put our strawberry plants not our coffee. Okay, so now we're just going to begin cutting out some holes here. Uh, ideally, I've got a long stretch right here that the bag is actually touching the metal. So I'm just gonna cut one, two, maybe three holes here so that I can put strawberry, strawberry plants all the way down the length of this side. Okay, so this is the finished product of our strawberry container and raised bed. Eventually I'm going to probably put something, I'm thinking about maybe green beans trellising them up this pole since it's so much bigger than it needs to be. Um, but you can see the strawberries are doing really well. Little tip for you if you decide to build this yourself is that when you're cutting out these pockets try to leave a little bit of a gap here so that you can it's easier to keep the dirt from falling out. But other than that, pretty simple project, just takes a little while. Good luck, and if you all decide to do this, post your video responses.